welcome to Back to Basics. In this episode, we will discuss using elastic architectures to help with better cost management and adaptability to volatile conditions. With the macroeconomic conditions constantly changing, customers are looking to build architectures that automatically adapt to demand instead of spending engineering resources to constantly re-architect workloads. Let's assume you're an online food delivery provider. Your demand is likely very variable, increasing during business hours and tapering off during mornings and at night. In addition, you may experience demand through the roof during major sporting events. Using an elastic architecture in cases like these helps you keep up with the demand, but at the same time prevent unnecessary spending by having always-on architectures. Taking the example of the food delivery company, you'll likely see a high uptick in CPU and network usage during lunch and dinner times, and almost no usage for the rest of the day. Similarly, you may see a huge uptick in database and storage usage at night when analytics and reporting jobs are being run. AWS provides many tools and services to convert to an elastic architecture. The first step is identification of workloads that are good candidates for these patterns. Using tools like AWS Cost Explorer, AWS Trusted Advisor, and AWS Compute Optimizer, you can get reports of underutilized and overutilized workloads. By leveraging Amazon CloudWatch metrics, you'll be able to dive deeper and understand the pattern of utilization. Workloads where you see a lot of variance in usage patterns can be good candidates for this conversion to elastic architectures. This is not limited to compute resources only, but also applies to storage, database, queues, etc. You should not rely on one metric alone, but rather do a holistic analysis using the tools provided. After identification of these workloads, the next step is converting them to take advantage of elasticity. Let's look at the food delivery service example and understand how elastic architectures can help with fluctuating usage. If we were to use an elastic architecture, order requests from users would come into Amazon Simple Queue Service or SQS, where they can stay until the backend system is ready to process them. Using a reliable queue that can massively scale provides reliability so that order requests do not get lost or failed. From there, instead of using a long-running compute instance, the requests can be picked up by a serverless tool like AWS Lambda. This is not to say that you cannot achieve elasticity on EC2 machines. You can still make EC2 machines elastic by using auto-scaling groups. You are also able to use other technologies like ECS and EKS. In this case, the lambdas can also scale horizontally and add more instances when load is high. The request then goes to another lambda which reaches out to an external payment processing system and on confirmation of successful payment, it updates the DynamoDB database. By using a serverless database for key value and document entries, you don't need to worry about the load or scale as it auto-adjusts throughout the day as your order volume varies. Using a decoupled system ensures that the first lambda is not waiting for long durations in case the external systems are taking long. For storage of any static assets like images or files, you can use Amazon S3, an object store with which you will never have to worry about provisioning, managing, or scaling storage as S3 is designed to grow with your needs to a massive scale and you only pay for the data you are currently storing as opposed to provision drives where you pay for the entire capacity of the provision drive, even if you're not using that data. Once the order is recorded, the restaurant and the delivery carrier are notified via Amazon Simple Notification Service or SNS. In addition, an entry is added into Amazon Redshift Serverless for running analytics. Replacing your data warehouse with a serverless one like Redshift Serverless enables accounting for varying patterns and requests. Keep in mind that this may not always be the most optimal route. If your workload pattern is well-defined and stays consistent for a defined period, then other provisioning methods may be better suited. Workloads that never expect to scale down or stop, like long-running training models or always-on workloads, may not benefit from elastic architectures. Other cost-saving mechanisms, like savings plan, will better fit such cases to help reduce costs. In the architecture we just looked at, all the components are elastic and will adjust their size automatically according to load. 
This will help run a reliable yet very cost-efficient architecture. In this episode, we discuss elastic architectures and how you can leverage patterns to design an architecture that automatically scales. By using the patterns discussed, you'll also be able to save on costs and deliver reliable services to your customers. For more information, check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching Back to Basics. See you next time.